Today we're going to look at variables and variables are what we're going to be using throughout this series so it's a good time to take an initial look at them. Now when you define a variable in JavaScript you always define it with VAR right here VAR because if you don't you don't have a variable so that's pretty easy to remember and that's a little bit different than Java where you will remember if you took my series on Java you had to define data types that kind of stuff nope here all you need is VAR now there are two ways to start off with a variable. One is you can declare it like we did here and we called it day, but we did not assign it a value. You can assign a value to it later. So here we just gave it a name, but we didn't use the equal sign, so we didn't give it a value. The second way is to declare it and then we give it our name right here. We declared it, gave it a name called assign value, so that's the name of our variable, and then we assigned a value to it, which is a numeric value, this long number right here. Now, similar to Java, you have comments, uh, which you can put in here, and if you use two slashes, what happens is the browser will actually ignore these and continue on to the next line of code that it finds. So, so this green here denotes that it's a comment, and it will not be executed in the browser. Now, there are three primary types of variables in JavaScript, and we will be using all of these in later tutorials. There are numeric variables, and that's pretty simple. We just put in a number right here. Very easy to remember. There are string variables where we put in some text or characters. And then the third type is just a simple true or false. Those are Boolean variables, and those are very easy to remember. So just three types of variables. There are some other flavors, but these are the three primary ones we'll be using throughout this series. So once again, you declare it with VAR, you give it a name, and then you assign it a value. And of course, this equal sign here gives it a value. So you must have that. That assigns the value to our variable name. And uh, you'll see this function here. We're actually going to put in, uh, we're actually going to type this in in a minute. And I'll talk about functions in a few minutes. Now, why do we use variables? Think of it as storage. This is the way the computer remembers something. It's his memory. Without it, the computer program wouldn't be able to remember things. So basically, it allows the computer to remember things, and it allows him to use variables later on. Now, you can only start variables with a letter or an underscore. So I can't put like a one, two, three in here. No, you can't do that. Uh, you have to start it out with a letter or a, and you see when I tried to do that, the actual variable name turned red, which was telling me, which Notepad++ is telling me, hey, you can't do that. Now, another rule in terms of naming convention, and you don't have to necessarily follow this, but you probably should, is that when you start a new word, you should always capitalize it. So in this case, and the first word should not be capitalized. So in this case, I had a sign, so the A is in lowercase, and then the second word, which was value, I started out with a capital V. Now, if the naming convention is just one word, we use all lowercase. And variables are case sensitive, just like in almost every programming language. So I will show you that in a minute. Now, we're going to do a tutorial on functions later on, but every program needs a function. And functions are very similar to methods in Java. So if you took my series on Java, functions are very, very similar. And what they do is they act upon the variables that we used up here. Because without functions, these variables really wouldn't serve any purpose. So think of a function like an action or behavior. This is where we're going to work against our variables. And so let's put a function in here so we can go ahead and use this program. Now this is called the alert function, and this is something we're going to be using a lot in these early tutorials. Now later on, I'll be introducing you to new JavaScript functions. But the alert function is something we're going to use early on. So we just type in alert, and we're going to type in open paren. And this is where we're going to use some of the variables that we defined up here. And we're going to use years and some text. We are not going to use game over or these two variables right here. Now we can define all the variables we want. We don't have to use them right away. We could always use them later. So we're just going to use these two variables for now. So we're going to type in years. And you notice how the IntelliSense for Notepad actually found the variable. So we can just go ahead and select that. And then we're going to use a math operator. We'll talk about math later on. And then we're going to add that to the sum text. And you can see how it found it right there. So we can just select that. And then we use a closing parenthesis. Now I want to show you the case sensitivity part here. If we put in T, this is referring to some other variable that we didn't even define here. So we have to match the case exactly. And there you go. And then we use a semicolon to end this statement. Remember, everything's a statement. So that's what we're doing. We're using the alert function, which is this. And we're adding our two variables. Now, this alert function actually is pretty useful. You can actually send a message to the user 
So again, this is a JavaScript function that's supplied by JavaScript that we're using here. So if this works out, we should get a message that will say 35 plus this year's old, right? So it'll sum these up and it should just say 35 years old. So let's go up to run and we're actually gonna launch this in Chrome. And there you can see we got our JavaScript alert and it says 35 years old. Okay, that is gonna do it for this tutorial. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.